Marketplace Morning Report is coming up next. And then in 10 minutes at 9 o'clock, it's the BBC News Hour on 93.9 FM. Let's check in with London to see what they're working on. London, good morning. Good morning, WNYC. I'm James Menendez. Today on NewsHour, the Israeli Parliament approves a law that prevents the courts from declaring a Prime Minister unfit for office. Critics say it's a ploy to protect Benjamin Netanyahu. Also, TikTok's future in the US at stake as its CEO prepares to testify before Congress. That's BBC NewsHour at 9 on 93.9 FM, WNYC. Fifty-one and some sunshine out there now. A 50-50 chance of some midday showers, cloudy and 63. Uh, that's our high for the day. We cool off tomorrow down to 53 with cloudy skies and another slim chance of afternoon showers. Once again, 51 with sunshine at 8.51. WNYC supporters include Optimum Business, offering products like secure internet with speeds up to 1 gig and built-in cybersecurity to help businesses stay connected. More at 866-218-2913 or at Optimum.com slash business. If I have a radio, I can tune into WNYC and I'm hooked into the world. WNYC listener Legacy Circle member Ed Gerber. I think I felt compelled to join and, and also contribute in my lifetime because I understand that this is commercial free radio and it needs individuals like me to support it. Include WNYC in your estate plan. Call 646 829 4587 or email legacygiving at WNYC.org. Maybe problems in banking world could actually help fight inflation. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Progressive Insurance. Progressive is looking for individuals who want to join an inclusive and unique culture. More information, including application, at Progressive.com slash careers. From Marketplace, I'm Sabri Benishor, in for David Brancaccio. The Federal Reserve is juggling multiple crises. It has to deal with fear in the banking system, but it's still worried about inflation, too. And in fact, the Fed continued its series of interest rate hikes yesterday, raising rates a quarter of a percentage point. But the two challenges could ironically, in a kind of twisted kind of way, work together. Marketplace's Nancy Marshall Genzer explains. Fed Chair Jerome Powell spent much of yesterday's press conference talking about the Fed's enemy number one inflation. Powell said no one should doubt the Fed's resolve in continuing to raise interest rates to get inflation down to its target of 2%. He said the Fed did consider pausing rate hikes, but inflation was higher than expected last month, and Powell says the Fed doesn't want to look like it's backing down. We are committed to restoring price stability, and all of the evidence says that the public has confidence that we will do so, that we'll bring inflation down to 2% over time. It is important that we sustain that confidence with our actions as well as our words. The Fed has another enemy to keep an eye on, all the banking turmoil. But in a weird way, that actually might be more of a frenemy. That's because jittery bankers are less likely to lend, and that can cool off the economy, kind of like a Fed interest rate hike. We're looking at what's happening among the banks uh, and asking, is there going to be some tightening of credit conditions? And then we're thinking about that as effectively doing the same thing that rate hikes do. So in a way, that substitutes for rate hikes. But Powell says don't get carried away and expect the Fed to lower interest rates anytime soon. He says Fed officials don't foresee rate cuts this year. And while the Fed is investigating why Silicon Valley Bank failed, Powell says he would also welcome an independent investigation. I'm Nancy Marshall Genser for Marketplace. Are your deposits safe? That is the bottom line fear that's driven the turmoil in the banking system these past few weeks. The FDIC stepped in and said, yes, yes, they're safe, and even said it would cover uninsured deposits. That's deposits more than $250,000 for a few banks in particular. Well, some have said, well, why don't we do that all the time? Insure every deposit, everywhere, all at once. To that, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has said no. Here's Marketplace's Nova Sappho. Congress is supposed to approve any increase of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation's $250,000 cap on deposit guarantees. But at a time of deep divisions in Washington, business groups have urged the Biden administration to find a workaround. Yesterday at a Senate committee hearing, Janet Yellen said no. This is not something that we have looked at 
Yellen said ensuring all deposits, big and small, would be a decision made case by case for each bank if more of them fail. When such a failure is deemed to create the risk of a contagious bank run. Is when the administration can invoke the systemic risk exception. That exception gave regulators the power to guarantee all deposits at Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. I'm Novasafo for Marketplace. All right, let's do the numbers. Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ futures are all up in the 2 to 9 tenths percent range, with the Dow future up 48 points. The 10-year Treasury yield is at 3.510%. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Palo Alto Networks. Palo Alto Networks delivers what's next in cybersecurity innovation to protect today's digital way of life. Learn more at paloaltonetworks.com. The three banks that have failed so far were all what you might call crypto-friendly. Now that they're out of the game for a while, cryptocurrency has a problem. There is a void of banks willing to do business with crypto companies. Marketplace Tech has been delving into this, and David Brancaccio spoke with Marketplace Tech host Megan McCarty Carino about it. Why don't you start with the, I don't know, inherent irony here. Crypto companies are meant to bypass traditional banks, right? Yet they need plain old banks big time anyway why well you know as long as these businesses are transacting in the world outside of crypto they need u.s dollars they need traditional banking systems they have employees they need to pay they have taxes they need to pay they need to do so generally using regular currency so they need to do that through the banking system and three banks in particular were crucial to this crypto ecosystem, Silvergate, Silicon Valley, and Signature. But why so important? Yeah, Silicon Valley Bank obviously has been top of mind. It was known for sort of being the bank of choice for venture-backed startups, of which some were cryptocurrency companies. Um, but probably the big one was Silvergate, which actually failed earlier in that week before SVB, and it closed down voluntarily. It had a lot of ties to crypto and a lot of exposure to a little crypto exchange you might know called FTX. It also sort of catered to the crypto community. It had a blockchain-based payment system that allowed payments to be transacted 24 hours, seven days a week, which is kind of unusual in the banking world. Uh, then finally, Signature Bank, it also operated one of these blockchain-based payment networks. I mean, may I ask, what's a crypto business to do if they no longer have a bank available that is super into crypto? I mean, this could really create a situation where the number of banks working with crypto becomes even smaller, sort of concentrating the risk of this volatile industry in fewer banks, which we know is not good. You know, by the way, Megan, right? Bitcoin, after its long collapse, is up sharply this year. How does that track with the tremors? in the industry more widely. Right. Well, I mean, this might have a little bit more to do with the interest rate environment than, than anything else. But definitely there's a narrative in the crypto community that, hey, nothing's better for, you know, selling crypto investments than a meltdown in the traditional banking world. Uh, in fact, last week there was a, a truck with a giant ad for Bitcoin plastered on it that was parked in front of Silicon Valley Bank. It said, be your own bank. So I guess, you know, never let a good crisis go to waste. Okay. Marketplace tech host Megan McCarty Carino. Thank you. Thank you. That was Marketplace's David Brancaccio and Megan McCarty Carino. In New York, I'm Sabri Beneshore with the Marketplace Morning Report. <laughs> From APM, American Public Media. Support for WNYC comes from FX's Great Expectations. With Olivia Coleman and Finn Whitehead, the new series follows an orphan as he meets a mysterious woman who shows him a dark world of possibilities. Streaming March 26th, only on Hulu. 
Up next, the BBC News Hour on 93.9 FM and a takeaway on AMA 20. Today on the Brian Layer Show, an organizer talks about fighting New York City's plan to change retired workers' health care coverage, plus the origins of the Equal Rights Amendment and where it stands today, 100 years after its introduction. 51 with sunshine now today, shower chances later on, cloudy 63, showers overnight. Then tomorrow, mostly cloudy and 53 as we cool off. Then on Saturday, shower.